May is National Stroke Awareness Month. Knowing the signs can make the difference between a full recovery or debilitating disability. Tanya sat down with the folks from U Chicago Medicine to talk about what you need to know to get medical attention as soon as it's possible if it happens to you. About every three minutes, someone is having a stroke mm. um, and dies from a stroke, and it leads to a significant amount of disability or loss of function. Yeah, a lot of people don't really uh, aren't aware of that, but it could be prevented if you went and just had a checkup. Yeah, absolutely. So there's multiple risk factors that we can correct to prevent stroke from happening, uh, naming hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol levels, and all these can be simply be screened with a primary care doctor and be corrected, and that could prevent a major stroke. Once a year, and you could prevent a stroke. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you're concerned about whether you have a stroke, there's some easy way, there's a, a pretty simple way, I should say, to figure it out. And you've come down to this acronym FAST? Yes. Walk us through what that means. And so it's simple three things, which is F, FACE. So just ask your family member or if you've seen anybody that is having a stroke, just give me a smile. And if you see one side of the face is not really uh, moving the same way the other one, that means it's a facial droop or what we call like it's asymmetry, it's not the same way. Mm. That means could be a stroke. The other one is arms. Just ask them to do something like that. Just mm -hmm. hold your arms up. Mm -hmm. If you have a stroke, you notice either one you uh, cannot move or just dropping down. Mm -hmm. Third is S, speech. It's either slurred speech, mm -hmm. the words are coming out but not coming out the normal way, or they're completely what we call aphasic, just not able to produce words, or their words just does not make any sense. I was getting ready to say, it sounds like they're having some kind of dyslexia or something going on in the, in the brain. And then T, of course, is time, time. to call 911. 911. Yeah. That's as fast as you can and go to the closest stroke center. Okay. One thing that a lot of people may not be aware of is that women are at a higher risk for stroke. It's because hormonal, right? So younger women, it's in comparison to men, they, they get pregnant, they could be on uh, hormonal medication like birth control, birth controls, uh, contraceptives, and these, when they imbalance the hormonal mm -hmm. in, in the body, that could be what we call thrombogenic, meaning mm -hmm. it's make them more prone to have clots. This could be in the legs, in the lung, or could be even in the brain, and that's what a stroke is. And so that's why women deal with higher risks of preeclampsia and other complications in, in pregnancy, gestational exactly. diabetes, diabetes, and all kinds of other hypertension. Well, preeclampsia, that caused the high, increased high, high blood yeah. pressure that yeah. could in, cause bleeding in the brain, could cause clotting in the brain, and all these are different types of strokes. Okay, so let's start talking prevention. What can people do to prevent a possible stroke? Well, the biggest thing is seeing a primary care doctor once a year. Um, and with a primary care doctor, they would assess you for, you know, blood sugar, make sure you don't have diabetes, mm. hypertension, making sure that your blood pressure is under control or may need to be treated, and then also cholesterol or family history. Mm. Those are the biggest risk factors, and those are modifiable risk factors where they can have a huge impact if they're monitored appropriately and treated appropriately. Earlier, you mentioned that it is the fifth leading cause of, of death. death in the United States. But that hasn't always been the case. No, when I was a medical student, it was actually the second leading cause of death. Wow. So we improved significantly in treating strokes. There's so many things we can do nowadays that we did not know uh, back in the day. Uh, for example, one thing that Dr. Polster and myself, we do, we can remove clots from the brain, which is something we never did before. And that gives patients a lot of good outcome. The thing is, you have to recognize the stroke signs and you have to go to immediately call 911 and call, go to the closest stroke centers because these new procedures and new treatments can save lives. U Chicago is one of the leading centers when it comes to studying stroke. Absolutely. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. We have the, one of the foremost uh, programs in neurovascular surgery. Um, we're leading multiple clinical trials that look at the different types of stroke, um, way to, ways to prevent and ways to treat. Um, and this is an exciting time because of the technology and our understanding of stroke have come a long way. And, uh, but again, the key is prevention. The key is getting patients screened, finding out who would have this. Um, but we are working on both ends. So we're working on finding out who would have it, prevent the stroke from happening. Mm. And then in those situations where it does happen, it can be lessened or, you know, it can be, you know, functional outcomes can be improved. All right, grab those phones and scan the QR code on your screen to find a U Chicago Medicine stroke doctor and increase your chances at preventing stroke. You can also give them a call or visit uchicagomedicine.org slash stroke. <laughs>